If you're like most people, the programs that you use most of your life are not like the things that we've been writing, where you have a command line and it prints out output and the user can type things in. Most of the time you use applications that bring up windows and that have buttons and drop boxes and uh, text boxes on them and where you can click around and do stuff. Those types of interfaces are called graphical user interfaces, or for short, GUIs. It's time for us to learn how to write GUIs in Scala. Now, it turns out that the Scala we're doing is run on the Java Virtual Machine, and there have been a number of different graphical user interface environments that have been part of the JVM, the Java Virtual Machine. When Java was first created, it came with a library for doing GUIs. And at the time, this was actually something that really kind of set it apart. Because one of the goals of Java was that you should be able to write Java programs on any platform. And this meant that you could write graphical programs on any platform, and that was, that was very rare at the time. And that first uh, library was called the Abstract windowing toolkit or AWT as most people called it. Now AWT made direct calls to the operating system that it was working with. The advantage of that was that it was generally fairly fast and responsive. The disadvantage was because it was supposed to run on a lot of different platforms they only included a very small number of things that would run on absolutely every platform. To help get around that limitation, another library was developed and it came out a few years after Java was first created in one of the early versions of Java and that library was called Swing. Swing was a pure Java library, meaning that it did all of its code inside of Java and it sat on top of AWT, so it made calls to AWT but it would draw on its own various components and so it allowed you to have GUI elements that weren't part of every different system. Initially this made Swing rather slow. Over time it improved and it got to where Swing performance was was quite good. Um, and in fact there is a wrapper in Scala. There is a Scala.swing package that you can use if you want to write Swing applications. However, more recently, and this is actually so after 2010, the developers of Java decided to work on a new library that was completely separate from the Abstract Windowing Toolkit, and it was supposed to correct some of the issues that they had made with the Abstract Windowing Toolkit, modernize things, and basically it's a, it's a clean break that can be faster and better and do everything they wanted. And this is called JavaFX. And JavaFX actually has an interesting history in and of itself. It was originally created not as a library, but as its own language. There was a JavaFX scripting language, and that lived for a while, and then they realized that no one wanted a new language, so they switched to JavaFX, and at the 2.0 release, it became a library that would work uh, inside of Java programs or inside of programs for any language that ran on the JVM i.e. you could use it in Scala. Now, it turns out that JavaFX, we could use that directly, but it wouldn't allow us to write scripts. For writing full applications, you can use JavaFX directly. Fortunately, there is another library called ScalaFX that wraps around JavaFX, and that's what we're going to use for our uh, GUI work. So, this gives us Scala-like calls, but it gives us all the power, flexibility, and whatnot of JavaFX in the Scala syntax, and we can use it inside of our scripts. So we're going to be learning how to use ScalaFX to build up GUIs, to make things interactive, and in uh, future chapters and playlists, we'll actually see how we can do graphics with ScalaFX as well.